You asked, they delivered. The K7XX from AKG and Massdrop is back with memory foam ear pads, a detachable cable, and premium sound for all around listening. Click the link in the description below before the drop ends. What's cracking, people? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Today, Wifey Sauce and I are doing something a little bit different for you guys, switching it up as we often do. We figured since Halloween's just around the corner and we're still in the month of October, at least at the time of filming this video, that we would do something a little fun and try assembling a full-blown system, a full-blown PC inside of a friggin' pumpkin. Uh, I'm sure this has been done plenty of times before on the internet. I did zero research beforehand. And, and besides, you can't escape pumpkins. Pumpkins are everywhere, and they're in everything this time of year. I mean, we can't drive, personally, we can't drive a mile from our house without seeing a damn pumpkin patch on the side of the road. And none of those pumpkins have fully functioning PCs inside of them. And we saw that as a real problem. So we're aiming to fix all that today with our little project here. Now, there are a couple things to consider when building inside of a pumpkin, as I'm sure it's much different than working with a traditional chassis uh, in the fact that it's just not designed for PC builds at all. So the first of which is size and space. How can we possibly fit all this hardware inside of one pumpkin? Pretty easy. Uh, just buy a big enough pumpkin. It, it's pretty simple. And then cut a big enough opening to easily slide all the hardware into it. We feel like we got a pretty good sized pumpkin that's not too big because you don't, you don't want to go too large otherwise the pumpkin's all cumbersome and heavy and hard to move around and stuff like that. We feel like we did a pretty good job sizing out our pumpkin. We had to dig around for one, but I think we got a good one. It, it remains to be seen whether or not we'll have to mount the, uh, the, the power supply here outside of the pumpkin, sort of as an external power brick. We're not sure yet. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But size and storage or size and space is one thing, is the first thing we considered, and I think we've got that nailed down. The second thing we got to consider is cable management. As most pumpkins I know of do not feature any sort of cable management, uh, you know, aids whatsoever. So in that sense, we actually really had to try to use as few cables as possible in this build, but still have a functioning system. And I'm gonna explain as I go over all the parts how I think we managed to do that. And finally, how do we prevent any moisture or wetness from the pumpkin itself uh, from damaging any of our components? Well, first off, we're gonna line the inside of the pumpkin with some plastic wrap. We might double wrap it just in case. Additionally, we have this metal plate, which is actually designed for mini ITX motherboards. It is, uh, is actually uh, one of the accessories from the Enthu Elite case here from Fantex, as it is a dual system chassis. It's already got some pre-installed standoffs for mini ITX. We're just gonna mount it onto the, or mount the board onto it first, so it can act as a buffer between the main board and the pumpkin itself. So, with that all in mind, folks, let's go over the hardware. I'm gonna nail this down really quick because we've got a lot to do. Starting with our processor, we've got a Core i3-7350K from Intel. This is a quad-core, unlocked Core i3 processor as part of their Katie Lake family on the LGA 1151 socket. Yes, it's last generation. It's already old news because of Coffee Lake, uh, but it's, uh, it's what I had lying around. In fact, I should mention that this is not a sponsored video. All these parts that we're using today were just picked off of my shelf and were selected because I felt they would be good for this particular project. So we've got this CPU here. Um, yes, this will be an overclockable pumpkin. Very exciting stuff. I, I've never thought I'd say those words in one sentence. And then additionally, we've got a motherboard to pair with that to Z Z170i Gaming Pro AC from MSI. This is a fairly high-end motherboard, um, all things considered for mini ITX on the Z170 chipset, of course. And uh, we do have two DIMM slots, a single PCIe Gen 3 by 16 slot. M.2 is very important to have in the back as, as that is the only drive we'll be using with this build, of course, an A-Data uh, SP900, 256 gig capacity super overkill. In fact, most of this stuff is overkill for a pumpkin PC, I guess depending on what you want to do with the pumpkin. Anyway, I'm getting off topic here. It's just a regular SATA drive, uh, nothing fancy, no NVMe, but it's going to be just fine to uh, boot off of and install some applications, definitely some RGB software as well, as we'll get around to. We've got a 16 gigabyte kit of this Mushkin Blackline uh, Frostbite RAM DDR4 at 2400 speed. Additionally, we've got our cooler. Our CPU cooler is going to be the CryoRig C7. This is a very low profile but well performing cooler for its size. It's fairly quiet as well. This is going to be a fantastic cooler I think for this build. There's only a single uh, single uh, three pin, I'm sorry, four pin PWM cable coming off of it. Going to re reduce some of the cable clutter. For our graphics card, I went with the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti from EVGA. I specifically chose this card because it's uh, first off low powered. We don't need a massive power supply to drive it. Additionally, it doesn't have any uh, PCIe plugs on it. It gets all of its power straight from the PCIe uh, slot, 
the 75 watt slot from the motherboard uh, is going to be enough to juice this guy just fine. And additionally, it's not a bad card. 1050 Ti is pretty solid for 1080p gaming. So this will be not just an overclockable pumpkin, but a gaming pumpkin as well. Now for our power supply, I went with the SF 450 watt unit from Corsair. This is an SFX unit. It's about as small as they come for a system like this. It's fully modular as well, which is going to help reduce cable clutter even further. So happy to be using that. Again, we'll see if we can actually fit this inside of the pumpkin or if we're going to have to resort to mounting it externally. Either way, it should be functional. And then finally, we've got some RGB lighting up in here. Uh, I was going to use like an NZXT Hue Plus, and I figured that would be just way too complicated for, for a build like this. So we're just using this. Uh, I have the box over here. It's a USB mood light for your TV, actually. Designed for your TV. I picked this up off of Amazon. I'll drop some links in the description or something like that so you guys can check it out. But it comes with a, a remote so you can change different, uh, different modes. It's fully RGB. Um, and it's a USB, I think is the most important appeal for me, is that you can just plug this in directly to the back of the motherboard, and that's pretty much all the power you need. You don't need to deal with another Molex or SATA cable that you'd need to hook up to the power supply, further making things uh, just a royal mess and things like that. So very happy with the parts that we have here. I'm feeling very confident. Of course, uh, we have not even started uh, building yet, so I should not speak too soon. Now, while I've been sitting here rambling off to you guys, Wifey Sauce has actually been in the office kitchen this whole time getting a head start on carving that pumpkin. And she's much more artistic than I am anyway, so it's probably best we leave that job to her. But why don't we go ahead and cut away to a little time lapse, see what she's been up to, and we can circle back with our components here and start assembling our gaming pumpkin PC. All right, let's see that beautiful mug. Let's see, oh yes, that is, that's glamorous. Well done, wifey. Thanks, honey. Looks just like me. Mm -hmm. that's um, what I was going for. Yep, and so let's see the lid. So the lid comes off like that. We had to make it extra large so that we could potentially fit the uh, motherboard and plate inside. Go ahead and see if it fits. Uh, kinda. Oh, no, the yeah, I was afraid of that happening. Cause it's well, a it's a it's a bowl shape that we're fitting it into, so it's not going to go down as deep as the. Why don't we just cut as it the a center. little bit on the edges right here and see if that works? Cut the edges. Okay. Give it a shot. I'm a little concerned because it's already barely fitting, and we don't even have the power supply or graphics card in there. Well, I think the power supply is going to have to go outside the pumpkin. I was thinking that too. You know, I told the viewers that I was sure we got a big enough pumpkin for this task, but I might be eating my words right now. You are. All right, moment of truth. This will determine whether or not we need a new pumpkin. Oh. Oh. Oh, kinda. It's a snug fit. It kinda works. But yeah. then we still needed to get, like, the graphics card in there. Now, hold on, hold on. All right, so now we have the graphics card mounted onto the motherboard, and we've kind of wrapped the whole thing in our plastic wrap here just to pre prevent any sort of moisture uh, getting into the components because we have not yet wrapped the inside of our pumpkin. So we're just gonna see if this fits right now. Is that a good up or a bad up? I can't it's tell from here. Good. No, it's bad. Oh snap. We're so close though. <sighs> Freaking pumpkin modding. <laughs> no, it's not gonna work. Really? At all? Yeah, should we just go get a big pumpkin? I think we need to get a giant pumpkin. Alright, let's go get a big pumpkin. All right guys, so Wifey Sauce has just come back and she brought a huge pumpkin with her. Uh, it's quite a bit bigger than our original one. Although I did make some headway here and I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that we're not gonna be able to see this one through because I feel like this would have worked. All we would need to do is cut out a little uh, rectangular area of the lid just to allow the IO be, to be visible from the graphics card and it would have been fine. However, now that we have this big guy, I'm thinking we might even be able to get the power supply in here as well. So we're actually gonna switch gears here and abandon this pumpkin tentatively 
uh, for this one because I think we can just do more here. We won't feel as cramped. We'll have more uh, room for activities and LEDs and things like that. So let's go ahead and pretty much do all the same crap we just did with that pumpkin to this new one. All right, guys, so I've managed to fit our motherboard, CPU, CPU cooler, GPU, and PSU inside of our pumpkin here, and it fits. Uh, snugly, mind you, but it's in. So um, kudos to me and Wifey Sauce, we did a great job. Uh, but we're not done yet. We still have to adhere the LED strip to the pumpkin somehow. And while 3M adhesive is really good stuff, I just don't think it's gonna work in this situation. So what we can do is we can get creative with some paper clips and some uh, some of these push pins here to try to, I don't know, to try to pin this down to the pumpkin. Um, I'm thinking we can probably run the strip maybe from starting from the side, going all the way up to the edge here on the, uh, the upper rim and back down. We really don't need too much length, maybe a good six to eight inches. That's what she said, and, uh, and then we should be good. And then we'll, we'll attempt to boot this guy. I've not done any trouble or uh, any test booting, which is probably a bad idea. But, uh, but yeah, I, I have utmost confidence that this will all work fine and won't blow up in our faces. All right, folks, the time has come. The system is complete. And the only thing we really have left to do is to try turning it on and pray to God that it boots. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, oh wait, how are we gonna power this thing? We need a screwdriver. Wifey, screwdriver, quick. Wait, screwdriver. I forgot that pumpkins don't have power buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, um, let me go ahead and flip the power supply on. I gotta find the front panel connectors here. Oh, I think I see it. Oh, I need a smaller one. I need a smaller screwdriver to get in there. No, I got one, I got one. All right, we've got a small screwdriver and uh, I've also got this robo grip wrench thing that I'm gonna use as an extension just so I can get in there. Uh, and it's also got, yeah, the rubber grips will hopefully prevent any sort of shock to my face. We have a fan spinning on the CPU cooler and the GPU. Power supply fan is not spinning, but I would imagine that's due to uh, just a low low load operation, silent operation under low uh, loads. The TV might have turned off automatically. Uh, we do have the uh, video card running out to the TV or the monitor here. LEDs aren't turning on either. Ah, we got LEDs. Ah. What's happening here? No signal. What do you mean no signal? Don't tell me no signal. We are not getting a signal, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys. So I may have to swap this card out for a different GTX 1050 Ti. Um, I'll be right back. All right, I got a video card. I got the uh, MSI GTX 1050 Ti, all right? Pretty much the same thing as the EVGA, same sort of size and uh, power requirements, which uh, is just straight through the motherboard. So that's good. So out with the EVGA card. In with the MSI. No signal. The new video card does not work either, which means it's probably an issue with the motherboard. So I'm gonna try a different motherboard because I think that's the root of the problem. I have used this board once in the past and it, I was, it was for a live stream, I was drunk and I probably messed something up with the board. I'm pretty confident everything else is working, but let this be a lesson to all of you as to why you should always do 
an external test boot before actually assembling your system, even if that system happens to be in a pumpkin. So um, don't go anywhere, we're not done yet. I'm gonna get this thing to frickin' post by the end of this video. So yeah, bear with me, On to the next thing, here we go. All right guys, so we have swapped out the motherboard. We went from, we actually got a pretty nice upgrade. We went from Z170 to Z370. We're now using the ROG Strix Z370 Gaming or Z370i Gaming uh, motherboard from Asus. Um, and the processor now has also received a pretty nice upgrade to a Core i5-8600K which is all the more reason for us to fear this project blowing up in our faces, literally. But we're ready for an external test boot before we do any pumpkin mounting. So uh, yeah, the power supply is on, the things are connected to the things, and I'm gonna short it right now. Oh, things are happening. Switching to display port. Oh my, woo, all right. Let's mount this sucker in the pumpkin. We had a bad motherboard. We had a bad motherboard. Wifey Sauce, as soon as this video is over, I want you to personally take a flamethrower to this thing, okay? This is not MSI's fault, by the way. I broke this because I'm dumb a year ago, and I apparently forgot that I broke it, so. Well, folks, we are now ready to mount this guy into the pumpkin that we created what feels like so long ago. Um, let's, uh, let's do that now before this thing stops working, because holy crap. All right, guys, here we are once again. Uh, it seems all too familiar. Uh, we are ready to boot up the pumpkin PC. Hopefully one last final time, um, because hopefully it'll work. I don't want to have to do this ever again. This has been, it's been terrible. Look at that. Look at that. We already have Windows installed on the friggin' SSD. Amazing. That's not the right time at all, but I'm gonna give it a pass, all things considered. Wifey Sauce, will you do the honors of capping off the finished build with its lid? Por favor. Sweet. There's even a little hole in the back for cables and stuff. Yay, thank you very much for your help, honey. Um, looks fantabulous. I'm not used to seeing wires coming out of a pumpkin with like full-blown RGB LEDs out the front. I say we run some friggin' benchmarks. How about that? Wifey Sauce is giving me the look like we are not making this video any longer than it needs to be. Uh, all right, fine. How about in the interest of time and to keep my head on my shoulders, uh, we just run one benchmark. We, we do some load testing just for thermals. We'll do a quick run of GTA 5, and no. we'll we'll take a look at the CPU GPU thermals after no. one run. Sound good? No. Sounds great. Getting a lot of support on my end. So uh, yeah, let's let's do that. Why don't why don't uh, why don't you guys while we run the benchmarks, while I run the benchmarks, uh, why don't you guys enjoy the beauty and majesty that is the RGB pumpkin PC. All right, boys and girls, I never thought I'd say this, but the pumpkin is finally under load. Yes, it's running Unigen Heaven 4.0 in the background as we speak. Rest assured I'm not cheating. The pumpkin is doing all of this right now. There's about five or six cables coming out the back. Uh, and uh, I also did make a mistake from earlier. It's not a Core i5-8600K that I have in here. I was under the impression that I was cool enough for Intel to send me one for the Coffee Lake launch, but no, they actually sent me a Core i5 
8400. So small edit there. That being said, we're still getting some pretty decent thermals, all things considered. On the CPU, we're hitting 71. Yep, still at 71 degrees Celsius max on the package with that Cryo Rig C7 cooler. And our GTX 1050 Ti, which is now the MSI card, we swapped it out for the EVGA one. That is not overclocked. Everything here is running stock. Um, that is hitting 76 degrees Celsius max. So overall, I mean, I've seen worse thermals on real actual cases. So chassis manufacturers, if you're watching this, there's no excuse for your case to deliver worse thermals than this pumpkin right here. There's just no excuse. Uh, and also it's, it's fairly quiet. I mean, you can't, it's so thick that you can't hear anything from the backside. You can only hear the noise emissions coming from its face, more or less. And it's just a very faint whir, very comfortable. Um, overall, very impressive little uh, gaming PC pumpkin thing, whatever you want to call it. That's all for now, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you did, toss me a like on the video and be sure to let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Feel free to get subscribed as well to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. And I will see all you guys in the next video.